All right, welcome back everyone. This is the worst start to a video I've ever done. I walked into the workshop and I dropped my camera. Let me see if I can take a, a video of, see my lens? It's still working, but that's broken. Thank God it's still working. And it looks like there's been some sort of expanding foam explosion on the ground. So, so hopefully that will come off. <sighs> now go! Wow, I hope the camera is alright. I can only tell when I start editing, hopefully the audio is fine. Yeah, because I can't afford another camera. Anyway, in other news, I've got the lathe over here now to make space in the workshop because I want to get a drum sander. Uh, so I need more space, so I'm having it over here. When I want to do some big things, I can weed it out. Actually, I'll show you. I bought from Amazon. I can put a link in the description if you like. I got these wheels, which are so handy. I'm so happy I have them. And now I can move the lathe around on that. So now I can move the lathe around, so that's really good. Anyway, what's this video about? This is part three of the table making series. This is a really fun video because I'm making the side rails of the table. The side rails are a very key part of the table uh, for structural purposes and also visual purposes. So. I had a lot of fun making it, I hope you enjoyed this part. As always, all the previous parts and the future parts will be in the description down below if you want to check them out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you've got any questions about what I'm doing, just comment down below and I will reply to your comment. And of course, if you're new, why not subscribe, follow along with the series. And yeah, I'm going to stop talking. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get straight into it. Alright, so in part three, I'm going to be making the side rails of this uh, console table. These rails will be joined to the curved rails and they'll also hold up the glass top. So they've got to be very strong to support the weight of the glass. And obviously I want them to look good and also join onto the curved rails well. These rails sort of have a wing shape pattern like a, a plane or a, a bird and I think that looks very cool. It's sort of a Japanese style that I've never tried before. I like testing myself and trying new designs and I'm very glad I tried this one. I think it's turned out very well. Uh, I like how the rails hold up the glass top instead of the legs. Uh, like a normal table, the legs hold up the, the table top, whereas uh, this one doesn't. I think it's a, a growing style, a lot of people seem to like it, and uh, I think it looks very good on this table. So uh, what I've been doing is milling up some curly maple. As you know, the whole table is made from curly maple and baduk. Obviously I didn't want this to chip out because it's very curly wood. So when I planed it, I planed it oversized and I sanded it to its final dimensions with the thickness sander. At Ryko Wood we have this Grigio thickness planer. It has a normal standard knife cutter block which when the blades are sharp cuts really well. It's much easier to chip out curly wood using a straight cutter block like this rather than a helical head. If we had a helical head in the workshop then um, I'll be able to get much closer to the final dimensions because helical head planers uh, really prevent chip out a lot. So what I'm doing now is cutting an angle on the curly maple boards. Now this angle matched the curve on the curved rails. I forgot what the angle was. I can demonstrate it in the next clip. You can see these are where the rails will go. And obviously to join all the rails together, that angle needs to be very precise. Uh, and I definitely don't want any gaps. To help uh, have no gaps, the area that the rail will be glued onto, the curved rail, I sanded it flat to, so there would be no gaps when I glue the side rails onto the curved rails. So what I'm doing now is gluing uh, the two pieces together. I put parcel tape around my clamps so then they wouldn't stick. Uh, this is a quick way, instead of having to make calls where you, where you plane a piece of wood and put parcel tape on that, you can just use the clamp itself. As long as you put parcel tape on, uh, it won't stick to the wood. So you can sort of start to see the rail shape come together. Later on, uh, I didn't film it, I actually changed the the wing shape. 
I found it to be too high and, and the glass was held up too high away from the curved rails. So what I did is I just cut this rail in half, removed some material in the middle and then glued it back together and that shortened it to the right height. Once I sanded this fat, I drew a nice decorative curve I liked on one of the rails, as you can see here, and I just cut it out on the bandsaw. Now there's quite a thick blade, so I couldn't cut it out all in one go, so I had to make lots of relief cuts so I can get around that tight angle. So once I sanded that with the bobbin sander, I used it to trace that exact curve on uh, the other rail, so they all match, and uh, it was just the same process. At Riker Wood we have two bobbin sanders, uh, that one you just saw me use was the big uh, industrial Wadkin one, which is you know, very heavy and huge, it's very fun to use, but we also have a much smaller jet one in the next door room and uh, that always has a smaller drum on it so I can get into that tight corner I'm cutting now and uh, I was able to sand that with the other bobbin sander but sand the big curve with this Wadkin one I'm using at the moment. The uh, bobbin sander obviously leaves sort of flat scratch marks in the wood so later on I did some hand sanding to remove them. Also I went up the grits to uh, 240 so then you can see no sandpaper scratches and this was the other bobbin sander I was talking about that drum is actually too big as you can see to fit in that tightest curve so what I did was we have a few different sized drums so I just switched that out to a smaller drum to fit in that curve I didn't film it but I'm sure you uh, can picture what I'm talking about and yeah this is the last curve I had to do I cut it on the bandsaw, did a lot of relief cuts. And then it was time to do some hand sanding to really get in that gap and make it very smooth. What I'm doing here is now adding a decorative arc on top of the wings and uh, this was so the glass could be held up it at two points on each rail instead of being held up by the whole surface of the curly maple i think it looks much better with this uh, subtle arc on the top once that was done i traced it and did the exact same thing with the bandsaw, cutting that, using the bobbin sander again, and then a little bit more hand sanding. And now it was time to add some Paduke accents. Now it's got a lovely red colour as you can see here. And what I did is I just uh, cut a chunk out of this plank on the bandsaw, and then I'm about to rip it in half on this big Wadkin rip saw. And as you can see, once I rip it in half, the wood on the inside is much lighter than the wood on the outside. As you can see, it's sort of like a white color on the inside. And that is because the wood hasn't oxidized yet. It hasn't been sort of exposed to the air like the outside of the board has. So uh, that inside color of the Paduke turns a lovely orange color once I leave it out. If you put the Padouk in the sun or expose it to sunlight, it actually goes a horrible brown colour. I would recommend keeping it away from the sun and keeping it indoors, and then it should keep its nice orange colour. So what I did there was just cut up some uh, little uh, tiles to go on top of the wings. I'm not sure what you would call these, you could call them hats, I guess, because on the bottom of the legs I call them socks. Um, but yeah, these are just some subtle Paduke accents, brings a bit of colour into the piece and I think it looks very nice. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, flush trimming it with my Lee Nelson 
I think it's a 102 bronze block plane. If it's not 102, I'll put the correct title on the screen now, but hopefully I got that right. And now it's time to add a lovely chamfer on all the edges of the rail. I did this in multiple passes, uh, raising the bit up slowly each time because this is curly maple and I didn't want it to chip out. And as you can see here, I'm going in from both directions. Now, normally on a router table, you always go uh, in one direction from right to left. And that is so the router bit doesn't catch the wood and uh, pull the wood through. But because this is curly maple and I didn't want it to chip out, especially where the Paduke uh, accents are, I had to go in from the other direction just for that final bit. This was okay because I was going very slowly, I was holding the workpiece very tight and most importantly I was routing a very small bit of wood away each time. If I was routing more then the router bit would have had more material to grab onto and uh, pull the wood in but because I was only routing a tiny bit away it wasn't an issue. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like. Uh, and if you have any questions about what I'm doing or about the series, uh, comment down below. And as usual, I will reply to all your comments. So, uh, I think the chamfer looks very nice. It creates an amazing transition from the Paduke into the curly maple. As you can see there, the Paduke has a very nice angle. Uh, I can't really explain it, but as you, can, as you can see, the chamfer really flows nicely between the two woods. So what I'm doing now is I'm testing all the rails put together, and this is so I can align them and see everything fits well and matches up. If I needed to make any changes, I can do so at this point before I join them all together. And in the next part, that's when I'll be joining all the rails together, so that'll be a fun video, but these two rails still aren't finished yet. I need to add a chamfer to all of the ends and had to be very careful uh, to match all the chamfers and also had a, a lot of sanding to do. And now the sanding between the Paduke and the curly maple, I had to use two pieces of sandpaper because I didn't want the sawdust from the Paduke to stain the lighter wood. That is a tip I recommend to anyone when I'm pretty sure with any dark wood really, if there's a dark wood joined to a light wood, I'd recommend using two different pieces of sandpaper for each wood because if you use the same piece of sandpaper, the dark wood sawdust will get into the grain of the lighter wood and start staining it. So I used two different pieces of sandpaper uh, sanding each wood so uh, the sawdust didn't bleed at all into the other wood. And I'm very happy with how that came out. It's quite difficult to prevent that, but that definitely helps using two different pieces of sandpaper. Now on to the final step of the rail, and that was to add a decorative curve onto the bottom. Again, I did that on the bandsaw, I sanded it on the bobbin sander, and then finished with some hand sanding. Actually, I didn't finish with some hand sanding, I passed it through the router table as well, because I wanted all the sides to flow and match, and if I did it on the top, it would only make sense to uh, route the bottom as well and I think all the sides really tie in nicely with each other and it looks really good when all the rails come together. As I'm sanding, uh, it's a really good idea to rub your fingers along the surface and your fingers are really sensitive so you'll be able to feel really easily if there's any bumps or discrepancies uh, and then you'll be able to sand them away before you put the finish on. And here I am routing out the final bit of the rail. I did multiple passes, raising the bit up each time. I tried not to stain one area for a long time because maple burns very easily, especially if you uh, pause you know, on a table saw or a router table, uh, a bit can get hot and really easily burn maple. So I kept the piece moving constantly and that helped prevent burning a lot. This is too much work. Right, that is too much work. I'm gonna be spending the next half an hour trying to take that off 
the floor. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I will be joining everything together. The legs that I made in part one, the curved rails that I made in part two, and of course, the rails I just made in this video. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that video. That should be out next week. I have to say, I can't believe how long these videos are taking me to edit. They're taking a whole week to edit. I'm pretty bad at editing, so that's probably why they're taking so long. So I'm sorry I can't upload them daily but I'm trying my hardest to get them out as soon as possible but it should be out next week after this series is done I'm gonna be making a lot more videos that should be quicker to edit and then I'll be able to upload more so stay tuned for them anyway I hope you're enjoying this series I had a lot of fun making it I love hearing your feedback and what you think of the table so yeah if you are enjoying it and you haven't subscribed make sure you do that if you want to support the channel I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a like and of course if you really want to help why not support me on Patreon? It really helps. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.